Greetings and salutations. This is Rick Topple coming at you with another episode of Lana Lane's Guru Guy. As you can tell, I have a special guest star today, <laughs> my son. Uh, not so much a star star, but he star of my eyes at least. But he's about to complete his, own, his last year of, uh, of his coursework and doing, mm-hmm. uh, what is it called? Uh, just cybersecurity. Cybersecurity, thank you. I'm yeah, it's probably blank. cybersecurity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, he's going to graduate this next summer, the spring that is. Mm-hmm, spring, yeah. Yeah. So we're excited about that part of it. But at any rate, uh, yay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we're going to look at Cali Linux today. Cali Linux, mm-hmm. which is a wide popular distro used on um, Linux by a lot of hackers and ethical hackers and and mm-hmm. uh, penetration testers and all that kind of stuff. It's got a lot of tools on it, so we'll get a chance to look at those today. And we'll also explain how to install it a bit more. I've already installed on everything I'm going to install it on, but I can tell you how I did it at least, and how, what, what I encountered, that kind of thing. Anyway, we'll get started on that right away. Yeah, Excuse for my... the, for my time in school so far, uh, Kali has been the primary Linux distro we've used, mostly on a VMware. So we've always had it as a virtual machine on VMware. Right. Um, but yeah, from my from my uh, limited experience so far, and from what I've heard, Kali Linux does seem like essentially the industry standard in like a security Linux distro. But I'm sure there's a lot of other viable options out there. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. We've already looked at Parrot. We've looked at uh, <laughs> yeah. Even at least uh, two or three videos of that he's done this on every time we come to one of these uh, cybersecurity ish computer distro type things. As you can see, it's open source, Debian based Linux distribution geared toward various information security tasks such as penetration testing. Security research, computer forensics, and reverse engineering. So what I did was I went down here to download, of course, and went click download, but then you get all this stuff. What the heck is this? You got installer images, and you got virtual machine images. ARM, you have an ARM option, which is what I use for what we'll be looking at today for much. Yeah, mobile based one. Yeah, I guess you it's got a way to install it on your phone. Set a cloud-based one, and each of these have options, uh, benefits, and non-benefits to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one that runs on containers, which is containerized apps. And you like Live Boot, which is another one I tried out, and Windows Subsystem for Linux. So what I did was I clicked on, I clicked on this one, ARM. Takes you down here. Mm-hmm. And you got you got Raspberry Pi 432 bit, which is and uh, yeah, your 64 bit, which is when I downloaded since I got a 64 Pi 400 over here. And you click this little thing it tells you how many gigabytes it has right there. We're gonna use a torrent download. And this is a. Uh, documentation page and here's your some check some to check make sure downloaded everything downloaded correctly and and you also have ones for other pies pi zero pi or one original and p pi tail and more pi zero and more pi zero more pi zero, pi zero. So yeah, Raspberry here. Which one I don't know was this right here though. And it's a pretty it, it's two gig file, but so it doesn't take too long to download compared to most things. But and when you uh, extract the uh, image file from the from its uh, like eleven gig image file, it's a pretty good size file. Of course, it has a lot of stuff in it too, so that's why. Okay, so I also downloaded the Sly Boot here. And you got Cali USB documentation, which is what I used to, to install and get a persistent uh, 
persistent on the server USB stick. It's 8 gigabyte USB stick. I don't know if you can buy 8 gigabytes anymore, but. <laughs> so, yeah, you need at least 8 gigabytes because the, the distro itself takes up about uh, 4, almost 4 gigs, 3 point something. And then you have to have 4, gig, four gigs for the uh, persistence part of it, too. I downloaded the 64 bit, this one right here. You download with everything, includes every tool possible. That might be a big load download, though, I'm sure. <laughs> most of the that, tools are just a quick command line away from downloading, so. Yeah, most any tool you need. And uh, you got this download, of course, torrent and some. So check some of the stuff, just like the other one, so it's a little more organize the bigger graphics and stuff on this part. You can also switch 32-bit if you have a 32-bit computer. You can get these options here too. Yeah, I think the, if you use 32-bit, it'll work on 64-bit and 32-bit, but if you use 64-bit one, then like I did, then it'll only work on 64-bit machines. So if you want to plug it into any machine you ever want to use, you probably want to use 32-bit. But um, there's not too many 32-bit machines left out there, I don't think so. Except I got one back over there. My mom's old yeah. Dell, uh -huh. Dell uh, Dimension. So. Maybe some old, like, legacy computers and companies yeah. or something. <laughs> right, right, right. So, and then, so that's right down. And then you can go to documentation here. This tells how to make a Kali Boodle USB drive from Linux. Using DD, which is a program in Linux, it comes with every Linux install you can imagine. And I use my own script though for that, though. Haha. -ha. So, uh, and then updating Catalyst on USB. Probably that's something I need to look at, probably. Anyway, there you got that there. And you can add persistence catalytics is what I did. First you have to install install catalytics like it tells you on DD or whatever. Then you run these commands when you get when you get it installed on your USB stick. The only command that didn't work for me on this part was this one right here. Because I'm not sure, uh, maybe this goes through the menu too fast and then it, it confuses it or something. Mm -hmm. So I just went through and I I did it manually. Uh, which is not too hard if you know how to use FDisk. I mean, with it all, that's uh, not too bad. Basically what this print, this stuff does, it puts a in, which is starts a new uh, partition on, the, on it. Then... Slash in means that's a return function. So so basically you're going to hit in and return. Then you hit P, which says it's going to be a primary disk, primary partition that is. And another slash in. And these two slash ins except the defaults. And then write when you finally get done with that. Hmm. So yeah, uh, that's how easy it is to do it. You just go... Here's first part so left this in the USB drive. Um, you have to make sure though that you, you're careful of this kind of stuff because you end up overriding your main disk if you're not careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, you can read through all this, it tells how to do it, and everything else worked pretty much as it was designed to. Copy paste this in your terminal. And then I didn't know I didn't when I booted up on it, and then that it showed that part up here. Just select this persistence, unless you encrypted it. And when you encrypt your persistence, you can do that too, and it tells how to do that over here. Adding encrypted persistence to a Catalyst Live USB drive. I didn't get to do that part though, so I just hit this first persistence one, and then it worked pretty fine. The only thing downside to it is it's kind of slow. <laughs> Especially when you go to updates and stuff like that, it takes forever. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, uh, if you got a like real high quality USB, it could go a little faster, but yeah, probably never be quite as fast as running on an actual 
computer. Yeah, the hard drives going to be easier to work with, in there, or maybe even micro 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 SSD. Might work better mm. in this part. That's what it did. It worked pretty good overall, as far as the look of it and feel of it. That's what you get on this Kali Linux. Kali.org is the is the name of it. Get mm -hmm. Kali blog documentation. Yeah, they got a lot of good tools on there. Community. So you can go get support from the community there. Courses. They have courses on here. Oh. Developers. <clears throat> A lot of good stuff there anyway. You look at that at your leisure. And we're going to go to Cali Linux on my Raspberry Pi. Yeah, it has a nice slight intro screen. Have you noticed that? With the, with mm. the tips of the dragon here going blue and then it comes up all over and then it comes up. And yeah, show it's a that visually to you. clean distro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have this is pretty easy install as far as Raspberry Pi goes. It's just follow the normal extract the image file and then you use image file with Raspberry Pi's imager to write it to a USB or not, not, no to a micro SSD card and then pop the SD card in there and turn it on and away it goes. And first first boot up of course a little more tedious but but once you get past that it boots up pretty quick normally i did test persistence on it did did save all my settings and stuff that i changed so that's good and you got your terminal emulators up here and change top it has it it's not bad you want to install it that's nice yeah i want to install it so it's, long, uh, it's based on Debian. See, it's not as fast as, but it's partly because it's a Pi single board computer, SPC. Mm. But uh, that one was even slower than this one was. <laughs> USB <laughs> stick. It was like I saw Kitty on it, and on it. it. took forever for it to finish, it seemed like. <laughs> Usually it's pretty quick, pretty quick process on most computers. Yeah, mine on my uh, virtual machine runs a little faster than this, but I don't have like a crazy amount of resources allocated to my virtual machine, so it's still. I'm not sure. <clears throat> and did that earlier, but forgot. What does the auto remove do? Basically, it removes dependencies. So, like when you install a program, mm -hmm. and uh, it has dependencies that get installed with it. Then, when you remove a program, it just removes the program itself to remove all the dependencies. Mm -hmm. So, you have these dependencies hanging out there that don't are no longer needed, but they, except they're taking space, so it's a good idea to clean them out once in a while. So, auto remove just removes. Any dependencies that are not currently supporting a program, right? Oh, okay. I said what I should do. I never had terrible trouble with it before, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, you got open uh, each top. Um, tapping around the keyboard. Excuse me. And there we have it. 410 megabytes of memory being used on this computer. Raspberry Pi to 4 gigs, so it's not too bad. CPU's not maxed out or anything. One of the things I was wondering about on this is... There's a kernel that it's using. Using 5.15.44 reason dash V8L. 
Yeah, that's one of the things I noticed on the sources list if you cover that and or show it. Um, and it's got one repository list in there. And two more another you can add if you want source packages. And there's a, it's a Cali rolling main contribution on free, so it's kind of probably what in Debian would be called semi rolling, really, is what it is. Hmm. So, semi rolling gets you more of the testing through repositories, which is mostly stable stuff, but there can be some occasional unstable stuff in there. So, it's sort of like arch, but not quite. It's got a different course. It's, it's called semi-rolling because it's like rolling but not quite. So it's test it's Debian testing packages. And um you use a main contributor and non free sections of it as well. So if you do a uh, pseudo apt update update <laughs> yeah and you'll see on there the where the reason I call it reason but I don't know if that's how you actually pronounce it but it's a re for Sean. So what are running upgrade that's different than uh update just the update. Yeah, update just uh, syncs your repositories with your computer. So you mm -hmm. have all the information for the latest packages and stuff that are on the repositories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then you then if you upgrade, that'll go through those what you just did and it'll tell you Tell you all the packages it'll be upgraded if you want to do that. So I've had my Cali distro for I think I they had me download it like almost as soon as I entered for one of my first like intro classes like probably two three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't I don't think I ran pseudo app updates since then. And it says I have a thousand one hundred forty two packages <laughs> can be upgraded. <laughs> yeah. But there you can see that the that, uh, apparently the kernel is in the reforce on kernel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it pulls the kernel from, basically. Essentially, it seems like my kernel was different. Yeah. Yeah, it might be because this is uh all depends on the situation that you have. Because mm -hmm. yours is on the, the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Yeah, because mine so was probably a, different computers have different ways. Right, because mine's a Cali Seven AMD sixty four. Yeah, but I guess cause since that's on a different uh CPU for a different CPU. Yeah, mine was for that makes sense. Yeah, mine was five fit point fifteen, which is pretty high kernel. It's not the highest thing yet. I think they they recently came out at five point seventeen, if I'm not mistaken, not too long ago. Looks like mine says Linux 5.18, Cali 7, AMD 64. Yeah. Maybe 19, it came out recently, I think. 5.19, so. Yeah, it's like on this machine, I've got this on right now. It's got a 5.16 kernel in it, I think. It's, it has it has to have a minimum of five point fourteen or fifteen. I forget which one it was, in order to even work. <laughs> oh, so wow. so if you just use the standard five point ten kernel from the Debian distro, it won't mm -hmm. it won't cook <laughs> on this machine. Huh. So, on your Raspberry Pi? You no, know, on this uh, oh, okay. this framework computer. I mean, this is a hosting computer I'm hosting this on. Mm, okay. Okay. I want to show one thing on one of the programs. It's basically is a tweak tool. You ever look at tweak tool? 
tweak tool. I don't think so. I don't think I've used that. Okay, well, we'll, we'll push that again. <laughs> yeah, you have the right keyboard. I'm so you're sitting here, that's on the screen and all stuff, and I'm thinking that's because. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, I think tweak tool is. Uh, Cali tweaks. Mm -hmm. Window manager tweaks is a is a basic X. Uh, something I needed to also mention is that that uh, this uses a XFC desktop basically theme pretty good and looks pretty sharp to me. But what do I know? Anyway, I'm a Linux guy, you know. Yeah, well, as somebody who's not uh, super proficient in Linux yet, it's felt pretty intuitive so far. So yeah. I think it does a decent job of uh, bridging the gap a bit between just your standard Windows user and right, like a, jumping into Linux. It's not too hard to understand or get the feel of. Yeah, I think it's probably a lot of distros use XFC as a base distro. Hmm. Yeah. Desktop that they use their base distros. So anyway, window manager tweaks the standard uh, XFC window manager tweak thing tool, which is kind of standard. But Kali tweaks is what I was going to look at. So that's me unique to Kali. And so you have this hardening thing, which you can harden your uh, OpenSL. Mm -hmm. The OpenSL, SSL, and Samba Clan are both checked to be legacy services, they say. They put in, you also select SSH client for that if you need it to be that way. Mm -hmm. Or you can take them all off if you want them to add security for it. And it hardens your settings for that. So. Hmm. You got these meta packages you can install. I guess if you're more need more specifics, you know, meta packages. And it's got these attack tools, Bluetooth attack tools, crypto I see more than what I had last time. I think they've improved when I upgraded. I haven't looked at it since upgraded. There's all these tools, attack tools that you use, so and you can see top Cali Linux top ten tools are installed and Cali Linux defaults. So all packages in the other in the other package we didn't use that uh says it has everything in it. <laughs> so there's some of the other everything tools you can download if you need them. These would be the these top ten and defaults, this is just like what usually comes with the like base Probably. install. Yeah. Yeah. And even that's quite a bit. <laughs> but mm -hmm. Yeah, so you imagine you download the everything one, how big that would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, so buzzing attack tools, GPU tools, anything out here look interesting or familiar to you? Hmm. Cryptography for like an actual specialist. A lot of like uh cryptographic somebody who's not looking to like necessarily do any penetration testing or attacking uh, uh -huh. that seems like it could be helpful any kind of like cryptography uh encryption type of tools now normally in most situations i go ahead and install just so people watch what happens but see and install and stuff like that but basically all you do is you hit your space bar and it marks it when you hit apply, you have to, this is kind of a in in cursor's uh, application, but yeah, you hit your tab button and you hit apply, then then start installing all the stuff that are on those. It's in that meta package tools. But I'm not going to do that now <laughs> because that would be too much. And this is too slow of a computer for that process to take. We have a big chunk to cut out, <laughs> but it's solved. I don't know if we have that much time left, so. 
You just demand a package and you got network repositories. Which uh, gives you additional repositories you can configure. For app sources, what we did earlier. Oh. So you got bleeding edge repositories. Automatically packaged and potentially unstable. Mm. So that's that's uh, probably Sid, Debian's uh, real bleeding edge stuff. <laughs> I forget what it's called. Yeah, Sid. Uh, yeah, Debian uses the uh, characters from uh, Toy Story. The uh, characters' names they use in Toy Story, and Sid is the one they use for their the raw testing distro. It's like, and they, they, what they do is they take everything from Sid. It's so like their big test distro. It's got a lot of bleeding edge packages that are bleeding all over the place. And then, then they move to testing when they get to the, they move the other ones up to the next uh, stage. And they move it one to testing. And mm. so Sid moves testing, and they start working on more Sid stuff while they work on finding out all the bugs and testing. Then when they finish that, and they're ready to move that into stable version, they move that up stable, and then move all the other ones down. And one called Jesse and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, so for you to use yeah. that bleeding edge, then you would be, uh, yeah, you'd be using bleeding very unstable. Or, yeah. <laughs> Probably be probably this for beta testers and stuff mostly. Mm -hmm. They want to test packages out for people and see if they work and where the bugs yeah. are and those kind of things. Yeah, I can't imagine the majority of uh, security specialists actually like working in a big corporation and want the like Leaving fresh, edge. just unstable stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of interesting. But anyway, Cloudflare. Community download package community mirrors and use your HTTPS protocol if you wanted to. Okay, shell prompts. This gives you shells and prompts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you can figure a prompt, but you make it look different than what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Change your default login shell if you want to. I think this uses uh, the login shell Z, ZSH. Which uh, most people, most, most, most of them use Bash as their default login shell. Mm. But this one has some other features like self completing things. It does. Yeah, yeah, I noticed it does have a lot of, it seems to have a lot of, uh, like, extra usability features, kind of. Yeah, in the terminal. Mm -hmm. And you reset your shell configuration to the default settings, so that's uh, good. And last but not least, additional configurations for virtual machines. So that's what that is. That's a Kali tweak tool. Huh. And so most that, distributions will have some form of like a tweaks window like that. Yeah. Some well, kind of any tool. any XFC desktop's going to have the Windows tweaks in it. Windows tweaks. Yeah, which uh, that's your cost no matter what distro you download. If it's got a, if you use XFC desktop, you have Windows tweaks in there. Mm -hmm. Which just gives you ability to do some standard additional things, Windows, that kind of thing. I think it has a, uh, you can decorate your Windows more and stuff like that with stuff. Thing you can change the position of your buttons on the Windows from left to right, right to left, whatever one you want. Mm -hmm. Like Apple, well, Apple uses left hand buttons, so if you're used to Apple machines, you might want to switch it over to that side of the the deal. Mm -hmm. Whereas most Windows are used to right hand buttons, so yeah. I installed one at distro that had them on the left hand side on one computer out there in the living room, mm -hmm. and Mom's like, "I want my buttons over there. I want them over there." So I had to figure out how to move them back. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So, and so that's the tweak tool. Now they got a lot of other use whisker menu. I'm sure to to get this more different look to it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you know, stuff here. You want yeah, to discuss any of this? Well, yeah, they show a lot of categories down there on the left side, like information gathering, vulnerability analysis, that kind of stuff. So you can go through each one of those. Um, yeah. But it's really the best tool, which I think I sent you right at the beginning, or the best way to like look through all the tools they have, I think, is uh, they're on their Cali.org website. Yeah. Where they have the Cali.org slash tools. Uh, which this is also helpful for having this categorization, categorization if you don't know specifically what tool you're looking for and you're just like, oh, I need a packet sniffing tool. And you can like go to o, go to O9 sniffing and spoofing and see like what tools they have available. But if you were just in that too. And I mean you could also just look it up on the web, but just Cali Cali.org slash tools. They have it on their mm. main website, pretty accessible. Um What tools? The Cali.org slash tools. Oh. Okay. Yeah, which this might not be too helpful if you don't know what any of this is because it's just a big old list of them. Um, mm -hmm. it'd be but, for somebody yeah but also you can kind of combine this with the list they have on the main web page um, and then you can just click on any of those and it'll go to its kind of like documentation page like for instance uh, that one there John uh, if you go ahead and click on John at the top there Mm. And this is the whole documentation page for it, which is also known as Jack the Ripper, which also mm. has the GUI called Johnny. So this is called John the Ripper then, huh? <laughs> oh, John the Ripper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, But yeah, all the actual like command line commands right. are just type John. Um. And this is for like password cracking with word lists and stuff, kind of like brute force attacking to crack passwords. Yeah. Uh, just recently messed with this, but yeah, this is a this is a pretty strong tool for that. And even like uh, utilized another tool that comes with it that kind of corresponds with John. Is I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's like C E W L, like cool. <laughs> Cuel, Cuel, something like that. C E W L. Mm -hmm. Um, and that tool lets you type in a web page, and you can basically it just scours the web page and takes all of the words from it, and you can go so many like links deep, so like a depth into the web page. And it'll just mm. take all the words from any like URL and put it inside of like a word list on a word document. You can combine that with John to feed it. So like say if you wanted to try to brute force attack or penetration test for white hacking, penetration testing, uh a company, you would go to their like company website, their like homepage or whatever, and then use the C E W L, the Cubal tool to scour their web page for all the words because it's fairly common for anyone who's inside of a company to use words in their password that is from their profession so you could kind of go through or even like if you're targeting a specific individual like some specific people in a company you could go to like i don't know their facebook page or something mm -hmm. <laughs> and then take words from that and then you make this big custom word list for a specific attack feed it into john uh, and then John has like mangling rules that you can run 
Like it's really it's, it gets pretty in depth and complicated, but mm-hmm. essentially just stuff like switching out, adding numbers to the end of like a word or switching letters around or like using leet leet speak to like switch out like I for one or L for one that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, like uh, like I know this one person said what they always did when they put made up passwords is they take some standard word that they remember mm-hmm. and they like put a three free and and L for or one for L and that kind of thing. So it'll go to and check those options, huh? Yeah, it it depends. There's a lot of different things like using using John because the the lab I did was kind of a challenge where they gave us easy, medium, hard, and extreme passwords to crack. Uh, the easy ones were just like one words. Like I think one of them was loser, and another one was uh. Squanch. This is based off of uh, characters from Rick and Morty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and with the default settings, like I just downloaded pajamas pre-installed, but I just like base settings. I didn't use any extra word list. Use the default word list that came with. I just clicked crack, and it was just like, like it just found those passwords like immediately using mm-hmm. their like default word list. But mm-hmm. uh, I was unable to do the lead speak ones. So it was very complicated and I didn't give myself quite enough time, but I know it is not that complicated to do. <laughs> it's yeah. not extremely, it's like an actual penetration tester or some expert hacker. Right. The easiest if you just have, people. If you just easiest... have one word, it's like pretty, yeah. What were you going to say? I was going to say the easiest ones probably are things like uh password. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, surprisingly, uh, I mean, there's there's uh, published lists out there of all the most common passwords, and password is in there. Yeah. That is likely because a lot of people tend to not change their default passwords when they get yeah. a new program or something. Right. They come with a default password, and they just won't change it. Right. Um, but some people just actually choose very poor passwords. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of difficult because you want a really complicated password, you have to create a real hash type thing. Mm-hmm. Then you don't have any way to remember it unless you use LastPass or some password manager like that. Even yeah. then, you may forget. Yeah, even it's a difficult. Mm-hmm. Even then, it could be problematic and uh, aggravating. Yeah, it's difficult for a lot of uh, people in like corporate environments. Um, like even my friend Skyler, he's complained about it. Like, I'll, they'll have a lot of different programs, and ideally, I assume you would want similar password rules, similar like password policies of like, oh, you need to have your password be this long and have this different types of characters, whatever, whatever. But he said in his place he works, he has like 10, 15 different programs he has to log into, but a lot of them have slightly different variations of like what passwords they allow on their password policies so not only does he have to remember all these different passwords he has to remember all these different rules for all the different websites and yeah <laughs> and that, that that's your last a, pass up chat <laughs> yeah and it becomes a problem and starts to kind of defeat the purpose because then like he admitted himself like a lot when he makes a new password he'll just like change like one little thing when they for like they force you to update your passwords, so right. it'll be like it's like password one, password two, password three, like every time <laughs> you update whatever your actual passphrase is, and just like add a one, two, three, four, and yeah, yeah, yeah things like LastPass, probably other password manager type programs. When well, you mm-hmm. have to worry about them getting hacked on the cloud, that's one concern there. Mm-hmm. I think LastPass had one hacking instance or something. Yeah, but, probably, yeah. I mean, that would be a big target for sure. Yeah. And, and uh, but, yeah, you can have it print out a hashtag where just a bunch of letters and numbers in a long string for password and insert any password program you're going to use, but... Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. That's, 
that's the absolute ideal is your password's just like a 16 digit string of random numbers symbols and letters it takes somebody <laughs> a long time to hack that or john or yeah. something like that wouldn't it yeah well yeah because that was actually on the four difficulties he gave us easy medium hard insane the insane ones he was like you know and i think he said like maybe one of his students in the past like one or two of his students in the past have actually cracked those and mm-hmm. he was like i don't expect you to like basically like it's almost impossible because they were just it was like 16 and 24 length random strings mm-hmm. and he was just like with your hardware this should be basically impossible <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> but you can you try if you want <laughs> That's where you want to use it for your bank account and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but then the whole thing is like your two options if you do that is either use a password manager or write it down, it's, which both have their own security issues. Yeah. So, I've I've heard the industry is trying to move away from passwords, but it'll probably still be a while before yeah. we actually remove passwords from yeah. I usually set up like I do SSH in my server. I usually mm-hmm. set up a, a, a keys, SSH yeah. keys keys on it to get into it. But I haven't done it on the server yet. I still use the password to get mm-hmm. in. <laughs> yeah, but it's just password. It's not nothing. It's all its security issues or anything on it. But it could be maybe. Way a hacker you get into my computer, read other computers on my system. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, the encryption keys are. Yeah, the whole like encryption and using public keys and that kind of thing. It's all really big. Um, yeah, it's especially big just because everything is going online over the internet now. Yeah. Um. So all that data moving through the internet needs to be encrypted. And yeah, that's a big yeah. part of uh, SSH and that kind of connection and stuff. Using yeah. those keys. Lot to learn about all stuff, huh? Let's see. Yeah. These are all ones you can get. Now when you select what I selected, you get the ones I uh, showed there. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Another interesting one, which I think is actually kind of fun to like open up and look at, it feels very hackery is the set <laughs> so i might yes. recommend trying that out trying to run set in the uh command line set yeah that's the uh social engineering toolkit and running it makes you feel like a hacker kind of <laughs> just ca- just because it is very like command line oriented and uses a lot of like ASCII art and stuff in its like menus. F S S A T S E T S E T S E T O E. Oh, it's a command line. Not all command lines are in here. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's specific to command line. It doesn't have any kind of GUI or anything. You might have to install it, but I think it's pretty light. I had this happen on USB where you can't open internal to remove it. There it goes. SCT, huh? Please write keyboard. Think run. So, command you can run, huh? Double check. Okay, yeah, you actually want to run SE toolkit. SE toolkit. Just like that. Well, uh, one too many E's. Uh, SE toolkit, not SE toolkit. Yeah, sorry, just SE toolkit. Yeah, there you go. I think that should work. Not running as root, do you have to sudo it? No problem. I didn't think you had to.
Okay. And then they give you that little warning message because it is uh social engineering is very specifically either malicious or penetration testing. There's no in between. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got gray hat stuff, I suppose, but. You read the terms of service. Yes. It is designed purely for good and not evil. Then you get that little menu down there. Um, it's got a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff I haven't looked at yet. The main thing I looked at was for some of my like labs and self-study, what have you. Yes, just this the... is what you use to do penetration testing, yeah, fast track. Yeah, it's, it's so one of the it's... tools. I think it's a pretty popular one, I believe. Yeah. And like the, if you go to menu one, that goes to the different types of social engineering attacks you can run. Yeah. Sub menu, huh? Mm hmm. Sheer fishing attack, back page, website. I hope we're not going to be teaching anybody how to hack and pay people's stuff to this video, but... No, we won't go too deep into it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, there's tons of tools out there. This is all yeah. super out in the open either way. But, uh, right. But yeah, yeah, like... Um, um, mm -hmm. I'd expect most anybody could find these if they wanted to. And yeah, learn yeah, how to use them. Yeah, I mean, we're learning them in class. There's tons of YouTube videos out there. Yeah, it's all super so well documented. I'm not going to get demonetized or, or nah. knocked off YouTube or banned from YouTube because <laughs> of this, have I? Nah, as I said, this feels really... That's why I think this one's kind of fun because it feels very hackery, right? <laughs> but, no, nah, it's very well documented. Um, Yeah, like the one I messed with was like the mass mailer. Um, a mass mailer attack which I messed with a bit, which I couldn't actually get to work because you do have to actually link it to an email address uh, for it to work. I was trying to send myself a scam email. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's a lot of different tools on there for, I think that's the kind of the, one of the easiest or more applicable tools on it is that mass mailer attack. So that's probably... I wouldn't be surprised a lot of spam emails people get throughout the day might yeah. come from something like this. One thing I noticed to have on here was a, maybe it was what I saw. Maybe it was what I saw in the uh, USB version, but just so I one that gave you a list of all normal stuff you remember, like word processor, stuff like that. Maybe in usual applications, and then it has like subcategories yeah, like yeah. accessories and graphics, internet, and you got office, other system, internet, graphics, development, accessories. So, if you want just the normal stuff, you can go there. I think you use Firefox for Stan Browser, also has Chrome and all that thing. Firefox and Kingfisher, honestly, it's a phishing. Website, huh? Probably. I haven't looked at that one yet. <laughs> okay. And then Firefox, it comes up pretty. Oh, it's Firefox. Can't when you open that up. When I clicked Kingfisher, it opened up a shell. <laughs> yeah, it opens up and you go in Cali's, Cali's default. Yeah, it goes to the Kelly homepage. So you still have to like type in your own browser. Yeah. Yeah. Browser you know, choice. But you can go anywhere on the web you want to. Yeah. Google hacking database. Exploit DB. No options in there. You yeah, also go to place like Mario Papa. Uh, 
same time. Here's my side. Match when I had more hair than I do now. <laughs> So anything else you want to look at on here? Let's see. Other, and we don't have to look into it too much, but there's a lot of other like default tools that has of note, like uh, Nmap is something for checking like open ports. So you could, uh, you could like ping, you can like ping, uh, try to ping like a company uh, website find out their IP addresses and then and map those IP addresses. It'll tell you the open ports they have and you can use the People will use that to like try to find avenues of attack to see what open ports exploit those. Yeah, um, hmm? And map just N and map. Yeah. But I think that's kind of a, that one's another like command. It might yeah, have, it a, looks like it might have a GUI. I only used the command it line. Does. See what um, that shows. It's just opens up a terminal. Oh, okay, it just show. opens up a terminal. Yeah. Yeah, that that seems like a pretty common tool for. Uh, it's not specifically for attacking, but for penetration testers or malicious actors, it would be for trying to kind of scope out a target and see what vulnerabilities might exist. Mm -hmm. Um. You got like Wireshark. That's from my understanding, kind of the the standard of like the industry standard for packet sniffing. Where you can yeah. watch network That's, traffic. I wonder how many traffic to my blogs. I have a count on my blog, it counts up in numbers each month. Mm -hmm. How many times it's been viewed? Mm -hmm. Wonder how how many of those are just bots? <laughs> there you go across my page. Maybe, yeah. I don't know if you'd be able to see something like that from Wireshark. Yeah. Because it, like, you can install, like, Wire, like, you can look at Wireshark and it just captures your, captures the, the network traffic on, like, a specific network. So you can do it for your, like, your own home's, like, router network and stuff. Um, but it can also be used like people might do uh like a drive by of like a company um of a company uh campus mm -hmm. and just kind of like sit in their car nearby and try to like use wireshark or something to try to catch packets going through the network but they do have to get into like the wi-fi for that to work and Ideally, a company would have encrypted traffic, so it wouldn't help them anyway. But yeah. not everyone follows best practices. Yeah. Um, another one I've worked with a little bit is like Autopsy is also installed in there by default. Autopsy is used for um, criminal investigation mm -hmm. of a computer system. It's when people say like, you delete something, it's not really gone from your computer. Right. It's because of tools like Autopsy can go into the actual bits and bytes and find stuff that you deleted but hasn't been actually overwritten on your memory yet. Right. That's why it's uh it's recommended for uh, any company to find ways to either physically destroy old hard drives they're not using anymore or use some software to fully wipe if they're gonna try to reuse in some way. People will go uh, dumpster diving for hard drives and such, and then try to find company secrets on old hard drives. <laughs> right. Anyway, we don't want to blow all our conversation before we, we have an interview with you. For those who don't know, I'm going to be having an interview, live interview show, starting mm -hmm. right, right, right. January or toward the end of the, uh, December, I think. Yeah, you're actually going to be here, so it'll be easier than doing all the Zoom stuff. <laughs> and uh, 
we'll have a live show and do a live interview with you and uh and um so we're going to talk more about this kind of stuff i think then probably mm-hmm. as well as other things like how good of a dad i was and stuff like that yeah <laughs> 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 but anyway uh, we'll discuss other things of interest to people hopefully and it'll be my first interview and uh, I got already another person lined up, Cubicle Nate with Linux Saloon. He's got to uh, go and interview him, second interview. So I'm going to get some more people lined up. And, Very exciting. Yeah. Thinking about actually going out and asking people like Distortate Tube and. and uh, couldn't hurt. Yeah, it couldn't hurt to ask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that'd be interesting to interview some bigger people, name people like that, just to get their impression. Mm-hmm. Maybe I could even interview Linus Tech Tips. Ooh. That'd be a big one. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you never know, you never know. Yeah. So. And I guess that's about it for Kali Linux. There's a lot there to look at and explore. Mm-hmm. We just touch the surface of it, basically. Yeah, well, all you can do with it. Mm-hmm. Kind of went off on some on some tangents, not 100% related to Kali Linux, but it is, I think, kind of like a closing thought about it is just that, yeah, it's like it coming with all these tools pre-installed and all the security options it has. No tools it you can like, put on it if you want yeah, to. Yeah, even you can put extra tools on it. It's definitely a very versatile system for any kind of security like feature you need. Yeah. You probably, if you know what you're doing, you even hack your own place and see if you're hackable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can pass the your, your own, system. your yeah. own systems. <laughs> yeah. If you learn enough about it. Yeah. So, um, I guess we'll call this a day. Thanks for being here. Thank and, you. Uh, Interesting input. Now I look forward to seeing you in this Christmas, basically. And then See we'll you all Christmas. With, yeah. Christmas, Christmas time is near. Crap, crap. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, may uh, you subscribe, if you haven't already, to this wonderful channel of mine. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, uh, and we'll... We got that coming up. Also, uh, try to put out about once a week or maybe taking a break the last couple of weeks, but once a week or so, I'll put out videos about distro reviews. I'm going to do more upload videos like this for distro reviews just because I can cut out all the dead time and stuff. It don't take two hours to do it. So, <laughs> uh, so at any rate, uh, thanks for being here, everybody, and uh, we'll. See you next time. And also, uh, may the Linux Force be with you. Bye. Bye.